Continuing to clean out my freezer. This morning, I pulled out this huge chuck roast. It's very, very large. And I saw my good friend Jen Chapin made these Korean shredded beef tacos in her, I don't remember if she did it in the slow cooker or in the Instant Pot. I went online and found this recipe. I'll link it down below for you. We are going to make it. The only problem is my chuck roast is significantly bigger than this, so I tripled all of the seasonings for the sauce. Here they all are, I mixed them all together. The only thing I did different is I didn't measure my sesame oil, I just poured it in, and I added crushed red pepper flakes just because I like them. Woo! Oh yes. So it's not as early in the morning as I would like. It's about 10 o'clock, so I'm gonna put this on high and we'll check it in about six hours and see if it is shreddable at that point. Here's the completed shredded beef. I ended up keeping it on high for about eight hours, I would guess, and then shredded it all up like this. I mixed some sour cream, sriracha, and lime juice to make a sauce, ignore the jello. And I made a slaw with purple cabbage, carrots, green onions, and what's this, savoy cabbage? Napa cabbage, I don't remember. And the sauce on here is sesame oil, lime juice, brown sugar, a little bit of oil, and salt, I believe. So good. So nice, good. nice play on a roast. Yeah, way nice play on a roast. Good morning, it is another day and I am prepping tonight's dinner this morning because we're gonna have steak. I pulled it out of my freezer downstairs. I have this huge package of T-bones that I thawed overnight and a package of ribeyes. And I'm going to just use this Montreal steak. There is a little recipe on this back section that basically has uh, oil, soy sauce, and the seasoning. And so you mix those together, put the steaks in there, and I'm gonna let them marinate in the fridge all day long. In an effort to also clean out the freezer, I think what we're gonna do is pull out the frozen cauliflower, cook it up, it's just the steamer bag. We'll cook it in the microwave, and I'm gonna puree it in my food processor to do a cauliflower mash. So, dinner tonight is going to be grilled steaks and cauliflower mash. <laughs> I think it's gonna be really good, very simple, nothing fancy here as we are on a stay at home order here in Idaho. Right, Speedy? That's right. We are not going to the store if we don't need to. Mix all this up, it's really oil, soy sauce, and this Montreal steak. I buy this at Sam's Club, and clearly we use it often. It's also very good on burgers. That's it. No real recipe here for tonight's dinner, and there's really very little better than a really nice grilled steak. Oh, hey, look, team beef. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Is that what it is? Where's the beef? What else can I say? I mixed up all my ingredients in this large Pyrex glass pan, and the steaks truthfully didn't fit that well, but I just like swished them around and rotated them throughout the day. See, like they don't even really fit that well. It ended up being fine, and honestly, the steaks tasted amazing. And I'm grabbing my cauliflower from the freezer, I have this garlic flavor and they worked perfectly for my mashed cauliflower. Oh, hey there. Hey. There's still snow behind you. Yeah. It's clearing up. Little by little. That sure smells good. Gonna be good. Yeah. Hey, okay, I am literally just cooking these in the microwave and once they're hot, dumping them into my food processor in which I already have half a stick of butter, some sour cream, and salt and pepper. So I'm just waiting for the second one to be done and then we're gonna until it's smooth like mashed potatoes. You tasted the cauliflower already. I did. And? It's very good. Mm -hmm. Mashed cauliflower is okay by you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, that's not a good face. You don't, you don't like the cauliflower. I love it. Okay. Dad, okay. Dad, Dad was asking for extra so he can have yours. I did want to say, if you're having a hard time finding food, the meal kit delivery boxes seem to be delivering just fine. So if you, <laughs> this is totally not sponsored or anything, but I did order. This is two meals for eight people. Is what I ended up ordering here for the next two nights. So if you guys are interested in HelloFresh or Every Plate or Dinnerly or one of those, I'll leave links down below. I have codes for basically all of them so you can get them for super duper cheap. And then, you know, once the code is over, go ahead and cancel. So you're not charged full price because that's ridiculous. 
Here's the shrimp HelloFresh meal, the hoisin shrimp bowls. Since I got it for eight people, we actually ended up with some extra. They look beautiful, don't they? It's official. You need to go make this dish. Here's the recipe. I'll leave a link to the recipe down below. You don't have to get a HelloFresh box to make it. This is so good. The key is I cooked my rice in my Instant Pot, so so easy. And the green beans and the air fryer are life-changing. Don't roast them in the oven, do it in the air fryer. The texture is just better for some reason. This is so yummy. <laughs> well, you don't wanna talk with your mouth full now? Um, what do you think of the shrimp and green beans? The green beans are, hurt. the green beans are delicious and the shrimp, Look at the I mean try it first. <laughs> No, oh, it's hot. It's, it's hot. Okay. Nice save. <laughs> hey, Mom, the shrimp is mind blowing. <laughs> the shrimp is mind blowing. I like it. So good that I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so I should <laughs> mention the liberties I took with the recipe. So you end up with the same result. I may have cooked the shrimp in an entire stick of butter. So consider that when you cook your own shrimp. I am making cheesecake. Now I've made my protein cheesecake a lot recently, I, I guess over the last couple of years, but I haven't made a real, real cheesecake, like full fat, full sugar, full everything in a long time. And I couldn't find an old recipe that I used to use a lot for this white chocolate cheesecake. So instead I use Alton Brown's sour cream cheesecake. This is amazing. And some of you guys might be wondering why in the world I'm using a KitchenAid at all. It's because my mom decided to upgrade and gave me her old one. It's a, it's a really old version and the head doesn't tilt back, right? You just lower the bowl. And I use vanilla wafers as my crust and a traditional spring form pan. Cooked it according to the directions. It was amazing. Haley, how's the cheesecake? <laughs> It tastes so good. It's a different recipe than anything I've ever done. Really? Before, oh. yep. Which recipe? Alton Brown. <laughs> Hashtag science. So is it a keeper? It tastes so good. I don't know what's in it, but. It, well, there's sour cream. There's extra egg yolks. Compared to the protein cheesecake, it's so much sweeter. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not fair. You can't compare apples and oranges. Listen, I love the protein cheesecake. It's a nice substitute. This is so. But Good. Yeah, there's, yeah. Why do they call it this is why I'm good. This is why I'm gonna end up gaining like 10 pounds during this crazy shut-in. Because we're cooking all of the things? <laughs> <laughs> Tonight for dinner, since I have a <clears throat> cold and don't feel very well, uh, I thought we could pull out some freezer meal chili. So this is one of my, I think I have two of these freezer chilies. Uh, this is, it's soft, but still slightly frozen. I think I'm gonna pop it into the microwave for maybe a minute and then just dump it into a pot on the stove or maybe the Instant Pot and cook it for 10, 15 minutes. Call it good, we'll eat it with some chips and sour cream. Easy, easy dinner and it's days like today that I'm very, very glad I have freezer meals like this ready to go. For some of the chili I thought I would make some french fries in my air fryer. So this is about five smallish russet potatoes. I did peel them because the peels were looking all sketchy. Just chopped them with my knife, right there. Tossed them with some oil and this french fry seasoning, I think it's from the Dollar Tree. That in my air fryer. Oh, I gotta plug it in. Speedy, you have to plug it in. No, oh, I'm just gonna hit the french fry button, which is 380 degrees at 25 minutes, and play. Ta-da! Loaded chili cheese fries. Man, these are so good. And I got Haley to make these lime coconut white chip macadamia nut cookies from this cookbook right here. I'll leave a link down below for you. I actually didn't have macadamia nuts, so I just used almonds that I already had in the house. And basically just gave Haley the cookbook, walked away, and let her make them. These are so fantastic. I highly recommend them. The lime zest in them, I think, is what makes it. They are delicious. Go make them. Tonight for dinner, I pulled out another freezer meal. This is so nice while I have this cold. This is a turkey soup that I froze several months ago. 
and it's in this huge like one gallon container so it's not quite a gallon of soup but it should be enough for tonight and i thought i could make maybe some rolls to go along with it so i'm gonna Next night for dinner, I decided to do a quiche from that cookbook that I just showed you where the cookies came from. That is also where this quiche recipe came from. I happen to have most of the ingredients. I think I substituted one, one or two things or left something out. And I would also recommend this quiche. Hey, I did make homemade pie crust. There it is. If you guys want my recipe for that, I do have a very old video on it and I'll leave it up here and also down below. And my pie crust makes two. When you do a quiche, you wanna pre-bake the crust. So I have foil on it and I weighted it down with beans because I don't have one of those pie weights. And so these are going into a 350 degree oven for 15 minutes while I prep the rest of my quiche ingredients. My pie crusts are cooked and so now I'm gonna start building my quiches. I'm gonna layer some frozen chopped spinach. I drained all the water artichoke hearts and bacon into these. And when you cook your bacon, make sure you save your bacon fat in a jar like this and stick it in your fridge. It's excellent for cooking chicken and things like that in a cast iron pan. So don't waste this, don't throw it away. I did have a little bit of pie crust left over, so we're gonna make a little sweet treat with that later. And Dave is shredding my cheese for me. What a man. Am I shredding or am I shredded? Yes. I gotta say, these look really good so far. Now we're gonna add our cheeses. So a little bit of Parmesan. Not too much. Well, they said a half a cup, but that seems like a lot to me. This one, as I was building these, it occurred to me that this would be way easier to do if you took some shortcuts. If you bought bacon bits instead of cooking your own bacon, or if you bought pre-prepared pie crust instead of making your own pie crust, although homemade pie crust is gonna taste better. And I didn't wanna go to the store for the Gruyere cheese, so we're just using Colby Jack. Hopefully that's okay. Gruyere's nice, it melts really, really well, but this is fine too. This is like mostly filling and actually not very much egg, honestly. Each one of these only has three eggs in it. I don't know that I would call this a frugal dish because you know, you've got like bacon and cheese and artichoke hearts. These are not cheap items. I do tend to keep a lot of these in my pantry just cause I like to throw together a pasta sauce with some artichoke hearts. I really like that. I'm not really measuring the cheese. My egg mixture is three eggs, a cup and a half of half and half, black pepper, kosher salt, thyme and mustard. This on top and hopefully it doesn't overflow. Please don't overflow. Oh yes. And because I'm doubling this, I did mix up too. All right, I have a little bit of bacon I reserved and sprinkle that on top and pop these in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes until they're set. Here's the completed dinner. I have my two quiches. I'm excited to cut into these. They smell amazing. And uh, this is actually two whole pounds of broccoli. So even though maybe it doesn't look like a lot in this pan, I just, did a quick boil of two pounds of broccoli on the side and we are ready to eat. I'm starving. It smells amazing. I'm starving. With the remainder of the pie crust, I sprinkled butter, sugar, and cinnamon to make these little, ouch. Okay, they're hot. Uh, pie crust donut bites. Okay, we ate one of the quiches for dinner. We're gonna have the other one for breakfast. I will say you don't need to add extra salt. I, I found it to be fairly salty because the bacon and cheese are salty. So, oh no, my battery's gonna die, hang on. Charge the battery, we're good, okay. Ooh, scary. I was gonna show you guys the freezer and the progress we made so far. Ooh, it's Shadow Christine. Okay. Now, I did wanna mention, I t because I cleaned out the upstairs freezer a little bit, I took all of the hamburger, like the ground beef, and took it upstairs. This is about, I would say 30 pounds or so that is now upstairs. This actually isn't tall all the way because there's a shelf here. I moved my nons in this little basket. I still covered up the blueberries, ha <laughs> so you don't have to see them. But now I'm looking at like rib steak, heel roast, round steak. I have one bag of chicken there, sirloin steak, couple of T-bones there, more roasts, and I am very nervous about this. I don't know how I feel about it. I have no idea how long this has been here. I don't remember when I bought this. Definitely freezer burned. And I like catfish, like fried catfish is good, blackened catfish is good. Is it gonna be super, super fishy? I don't know. 
this is the progress I made in the chest freezer. So exciting. Look, I could basically crawl in there at this point. We've done huge progress in the last four weeks on the freezer. So my question to you is, do I continue the freezer clean out? Do I move to one of the upstairs freezers? Maybe take the roasts and stuff out of here and move them up just to get this one empty. I'm not sure, like, I don't know what the best plan is because there's a lot of roast in here. We can't eat roast every day. That's a lot of roast. What do you guys think? What do you think I should do? Of course, like always, if, um, if I have a recipe for you, I will link it below along with any uh, cool tools or anything like that that I used in this video. I'm having a hard time remembering what is in this video at this point. That's the hard part about filming these over like a week or longer because I don't, at this point, I don't know what's going on. Plus I have a cold. Can you hear it? Can you hear it, my boys? Dave says I'm not thinking very clearly at the moment. <laughs> uh, click on the screen to see any other videos that I've done. And I hopefully will be filming my next extreme grocery budget challenge uh, over the next little while. So look for that sometime in April. We'll, we'll see it sometime in April. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.